Welcome to the world of scale modeling with Mike Ashey, where techniques, tips, and creativity come alive with dozens of tutorials, projects, tape-up reviews, and picture references to help you build better scale models and enjoy our wonderful hobby. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of our Scale Modeling Channel. This evening, we're doing a tape-up review of the brand new Trumpeter 132nd Scale TBD-1 Devastator. It's only been on the market for about three weeks. So, where we're gonna start is I've done a lot of sub-assembly work, and I'm gonna step you through that and show you some of the techniques that I use to get around some of the challenges on this kit. There's not many of them. It fits together fairly well. Then we're gonna go to the tape-up, and then finally, scans of all the parts. So let's get started. The control surfaces and the, uh, the rudders fit together and the elevators fit together really really nice. <clears throat> There's almost no seam here at all. Here or here or and, and any of these. The, the fit is very very tight. Of course you're going to have to run a bead of super glue with a stiff microwire like this one. This is 0 0.018 and this is what I use for just about everything of super glue right along these edges and then just some careful scraping and sanding and you're done. And uh, the control services fit. The, the tolerance is just really really tight. So when you go to paint these and then assemble them, if you're going to assemble uh, paint them separately, you're going to need to scrape the paint off here because the tolerance is so tight you're not going to be able to get them on. And if you want to position the uh, elevators in a position other than this, what you're going to need to do is remove these tabs so that you can rotate the elevators. The rudder, just like the elevators, uh, go together very very well. The fit is very tight. You've got <clears throat> this tiny seam you need to deal with here and the fit just like on the rudders is nice and tight on the fuselage and here again if you want to position it in any other position other than like this then uh, you're going to need to remove these two tabs so that uh, you can rotate it. The tolerance is not as tight on this as it is on the uh, elevators but uh, you're probably still going to have to scrape away some of the paint here in order to, to do it. So, um, yeah, that's uh, pretty impressive. The outer wings fit together really, really well. And there, there's a little bit of flexibility, but once you put these inserts in place, it really strengthens the wing. Also, these control surfaces fit exceptionally well into their respective locations and they they go together very nice with very very little seam work to do and actually you don't even have to mess with this seam work on the inside here because once they are in place and this is actually you could actually there are there are very few photos of a of a devastator on the internet and the, and there is one that I found where um, the wings were folded on one side and you can actually see that seam right there so this is uh, actually how this control surface snugged up against the wing the one thing I didn't see was I don't know if these holes uh, or these depressions are supposed to be hollow or not uh, it appears that on some of them they were and on some of them some of the photos I've seen um, They're not so and I don't know if it's just the pictures or what but um, Trumpeter did a really good job of uh, Capturing this detail these fold mechanisms. There's two of them and The way you do these is to center them the instructions actually have you make pull this out the instructions actually have you glue these in place so if when you do make sure that they're glued straight I would use tiny drops of testers glue inside these holes make sure they're both straight and well seated and then after they dry put a tiny bit of super glue around the perimeters and that'll 
make it really, really strong. So I'll show you the fit on these now that I've got the uh, the uh, inner wings, the inner wing assembly uh, taped up in a few minutes. So um, it came out really, I mean, it's pretty impressive how tight the fit is on both of these. And on this wing, uh, I'm, I'm going to have this one open and this one folded. And uh, here again, even on this wing, it's, you know, nice and tight. And uh, I'm not sure how these pins are going to seat uh, inside uh, the wing when it all uh, gets taped together. Um, I have noticed that there, again, there's not a lot of pictures of Devastators and the ones that I've seen, you can actually see the fold line here. So it wasn't a snug, snug fit like on later aircraft, like the Wildcat, the Hellcat, the Corsair, all the naval aircraft in uh, later designs, when they folded, you could barely see the seam. Um, but uh, I'm pretty impressed with how these other wings went together. The challenge you're going to have in, with respect to dealing with this seam, of course, is this ribbing. So, and this is a problem with every kit, whether it's this kit, 148 scale, or one. 70 second scale kits, you got the same problem. Either you deal with this seam and lose the ribbing on the leading edge, or what you do is you take thin, stiff brass wire, dip it in some medium set super glue, and then very carefully just hit it right on the center area here between the ribs. And the glue will spread out on both sides and uh, fill the seam. And so if you carefully do that, and you can see I did that on right there, just to see if it would work, and it did. And so when you do that, what you do is you then take a flexifile, and this one has been modified for another kit, but you can actually cut these very, very thin, and you cut it thin enough to be able to get in there between the ribbing without impacting the ribbing and just very carefully sand that super glue smooth and, and if you just use tiny drops of the medium set super glue and use fresh super glue go from here to here and then dispose of that puddle and then do another puddle to here and another puddle to here so that it's nice and fresh where it's got very good capillary action it'll It'll, from the center, it'll go to the left and to the right, and it'll fill these tiny seams here. And then, uh, of course, in these areas, you don't have to worry about that. So, uh, and then on the inside, because of the way they designed this, um, you just need to put some tiny drops of super glue here, but you don't need to, to do anything with that seam because it's going to be covered. Get it in there, and uh, again, that tolerance is really, really tight. So um, that's how I would fix the seam on this ribbing. Uh, that's about the only way you could do that and preserve all of this detail, which is actually what the real aircraft wings look like. So um, that's a comment on that. Now on the inner wing, you've got this huge cavity and they did put a, a support right there problem is it's not enough so <clears throat> what I would do is I would put some strips just laminate some strips on the inside here and on the upper wing and what that does is it helps prevent flexing so that when these parts get glued together and here again you're going to have to deal with this ribbing detail when these parts get glued together what you don't want it to do is flex. And with that extra ribbing that you laminated on the inside, it'll help it not to flex. There's a piece, uh, this piece is for the wings in the folded position, and this piece is for the wings in the, in the open position. That'll add a lot of strength to this area. And then in here, where it attaches to the fuselage, these two pins, uh, hollow pins, um, or like a pedestal, so to speak, help prevent flexing here. So uh, I haven't checked the fit of the inner wings to the fuselage. I suspect it's going to be tight, 
just like everything else. And so um, there will be a minimal amount of seam work that you're going to have to do between the fuselage and the, uh, the, the uh, inner wing, the top halves of the inner wings. So um, the other comment is that what I would do, and this, this is where the flaps are, so what I would do is hold these down because they, they have a little bit of flexing to them um, and then put tiny beads of super glue here and then Trumpeter gave you two options. You can either do flaps closed or, uh, let me get the right one here. Does this one go here? Nope, this one goes here. I had this one right before. Or flaps open. And by modifying these pens you can adjust these the the flap openings so that you can pretty much hide that <clears throat> the other thing is that there's these two fillets that go somewhat like that and so what you need to do what I would do is I would use testers tube glue to attach them and then that gives you some time to position them properly because there's no locating or alignment pins on these so uh, again, they, they did a really nice job on uh, the uh, surface detail. And again, my comment on <clears throat> petite engraved lines is this would represent uh, surface panels that were butt jointed together. Problem is, <clears throat> this aircraft had sheet skin that was not butt jointed, but lap jointed for strength and uh, for expediency in construction. So, um, you know, for those of you who like model art, you're going to love these, these uh, petite engraved lines. For those of you who prefer accuracy, what you should have is a very petite raised panel line where the sheets of aluminum overlap. And right where they overlap is where there is, should be a raised um, panel line to represent that. On the old monogram kits, they accurately represented that on a lot of their kits because a lot of their kits were aircraft that were lap jointed, not butt jointed. Now the Corsair, the World War II F4U Corsair was all butt jointed together which was pretty cool, but uh, most aircraft like the SPD and this uh, Devastator, these were all lap jointed on the surface. I've got the uh, inner wings glued up and uh, came out pretty good. And you can see one side I'm going to have the uh, wing folded. Uh, there's two pieces here, this fillet that goes in place and it fits nicely into the, into the wing. And then this uh, actuator bar is separate. On the other side, it, since this is going to be closed, it's just uh, a plate, again, fits nicely in place. So <clears throat> let's do this wing first. And these tabs fit into these holes, and you get a fairly tight fit. Now, here's the challenge. If you set the upper wing correctly, you're going to have a slight void on the bottom wing that you're going to have to fill in a little bit. If you push the wing in so that the bottom void more or less disappears, you get this slight ledge here. So it's a kind of six and one half dozen of the other. And uh, I just wanted you to be aware of that. But the fit's not too bad. You just need to tweak it a little bit. On the folded side, these fold mechanisms, this one here is kind of uh, petite. So you got to be careful. They do fit nicely into place and um, they'll pop out on you if you're not careful and they're not glued. But It'll sit just like that. Just like that. So um, what I would do is I would wait until 
you've got everything else assembled, uh, and then glue these into place. This needs to be one of the last things because this one is not very strong and it's going to snap on it. So you need to be careful. The tires on this kit are these soft rubber tires that are hollow on the inside and the hub assembly is a, a two-piece assembly so what I would suggest that you do is go ahead and glue it together with some testers glue and then after it dries run a bead of super glue along that seam line so that it's nice and strong <clears throat> and then uh, what you do is you pop these into place just like that now they'll pop back out um, it takes a little bit of work to get them out but they'll pop out so that uh, you can paint them and then uh, pop them into place but uh, they look really really nice the landing gear have the uh, hydraulic lines for the brakes already in place and it's a two-piece assembly you've got the main strut here it's all one piece and then this piece is um, separate so what I did to position that properly was I um, oh, got the wrong one I positioned the landing gear this main piece and then position that and then glued it into place with some testers glue and then when it was a dry I put a little bit of uh, super glue on it and the wheels fit onto the axles nice and tight there's almost no wiggle to it at all so uh, it looks pretty good and then we get the other one in place for some reason the other side is a little bit tighter uh, so you need to be careful when you're when you're putting it in kind of pops in place now I'll go ahead and put this wheel on and so um, this is what it looks like it looks pretty good the engine is a multi-piece affair the uh, each row or each bank of cylinders on this 1830 or 1830 engine are separate so you got to glue them together but I wouldn't mess with the seams because when you put it inside the cowling you're just going to see the engine front that's all you're going to see so <clears throat> the push rods are separate on the front and the back and uh, you've got uh, the intake and exhausts all here a lot of nice detail unfortunately when it's closed up you're not going to see all this detail so um, these are the positioning pins and it will fit just like that Oop. not bad not a bad fit the exhaust ports, they made them hollow and they've got a separate part here for them. And there's no alignment pin, so again, uh, use testers glue to align it and then put tiny drops of uh, super glue along the seams and then just clean up the seams. Now, any alternative to this, because you're still going to have to add some wiring to it, uh, and uh, I'm sure Edward's going to come out with a wiring harness for this, but what you could do is resin 2 details. Uh, makes a 3D printed engine front of an R1830 and you could use that. What you're going to have to do is build up this area here to push that, that uh, engine front forward enough so that it sits properly. Let me see if I can do this. Uh, the other thing is the kit gives you both open and closed cowlings which is a really nice touch. So that's how the engine's going to sit, so you're going to have to build up that pedestal on the back if you decide to use a 3D printed engine. On the open uh, cowling, there is no detail on the inside of the cowlings, the flap mechanisms, although you're not going to really see it once you close up. And uh, the cowling fits nicely onto the fuselage. And they give you another cowling that has closed flaps nice touch trumpeter 
and it fits well into place. Same thing. So um, this little piece up here is where the antenna goes. Uh, and uh, nicely done. It, uh, it all fits very, very well. Oop, I don't want to drop this engine because uh, I need it for the final tape up. And uh, everything fit together very well. On the back, it's kind of keyed so that you can't mix things up. But uh, just be careful assembling this back section because you want the exhaust ports to come out where these depressions are. And uh, I had to do this twice before I got it right. So just be aware of that. The uh, propeller is a two-piece affair. This, uh, the governor on, on the front here fits separately and it's really, really tight. But uh, the propeller shaft fits on the uh, engine quite nicely. The interior structural components are very well done and everything almost pops into place and the fits tight and although I have tape on here the only part that really needed to be taped was this top piece everything else uh, there the uh, positioning tabs are kind of these diamond shaped tabs and uh, it's nice and tight so there's a lot of small details that uh, Trumpeter provided but uh, I wanted to tape together the main sections <clears throat> of the interior components and then uh, check their fit in the fuselage. But uh, this fits together really, really nice. Again, uh, Trumpeter did a really nice job on the engineering of these parts. And I'm sure Edward will come out with a colored placard set at some point for this but uh, yeah looks pretty good the fit of the elevators to the fuselage is pretty good um, when you snap them into place you can see that they kind of sag down a little bit so what you're going to need to do is position them properly and then run some beads of super glue along this top F here so that they're uh, they're set properly and then um, on the underside there's some voids unfortunately that uh, you're gonna have to fill right there on both sides but uh, I would get this the top as tight as you can see how tight you can get that and then um, go ahead and just fill it with super glue and clean it up but uh, looks pretty good but the other thing is I would definitely do that without these tail pieces on here the elevators on here so that you can concentrate on I would set this with some tape from here to here from here to here so that you get uh, <clears throat> you get them positioned correctly and then uh, again just put some beads of super glue in here to hold it in place and then you can fill in sand as you see fit the uh, main wing is a little bit finicky on the underside there's these two tabs this one fits perfectly this one you have to push the fuselage out just a little bit and the other thing I had to do <clears throat> was I had to sand these down a little bit so that they'll they fit in place because they were a little too large for these rectangular openings here um, and I'll just fill this with super glue on both sides and sand it smooth you won't lose any detail because there's no surface detail here so now <clears throat> the uh, so that that's the underside and you see how it, it'll pop out if you're not careful so now the upper side there is a void between the wing fillets and, and the fuselage on both sides but I think what you do what you're going to do is uh, you have to raise the dihedral up just a little bit on both sides and you can close up that gap pretty much 
on both sides. And I think that that would, because the, these airplanes, <clears throat> they did not have a straight wing that came out. They had a fairly noticeable dihedral up. So that's what I would do is I would go ahead and glue them and that it cut down on your, on the work you have to do. The other thing is um, there's a tiny bit of a step here between the edge of this uh, wing and where the fuselage is. And what you can do is if you put probably five thousandths of a wedge under here, you can see right there. See how it's moving a little bit? So if you put a wedge under there, you'll raise that wing just enough so that you get rid of that step on both sides. So don't glue that pedestal in place until you put some wedges under it and see if that fixes this step problem that you're going to have. But um, it's, you know, it's, it's got a, it's typical for uh, an aircraft model to have this wing to fuselage fit problem. Had the problem, same problem on their uh, uh, SPD Dauntless. But um, yeah, it'll look good when it's done. The fit of the cockpit assembly inside of the fuselage is very nice. Nice tight fit. And uh, you're going to have to tweak it just a little bit. And I had to do the same thing on their SBD. So uh, you hold it tight and then run a bead of super glue on one side and then the other side and then uh, closes it up. Rear part of the fuselage is uh, seam work will be minimum. On the aft part of the underside, the seam work will be minimum. And uh, I already showed you how the wing fits on here. And uh, same thing here. Uh, my tape's slipping a little bit, but uh, it's nice and tight. And then there's an opening in the front here when uh, these aircraft were being used as bombers. It was actually, and I didn't know this until I read up on it, the, if it was operating as a torpedo bomber, you only had two guys. If it was operating as a, as a dive bomber or a low-level bomber, you had three guys, one here, here, and here. And this guy would actually crawl down onto his stomach, and uh, this front piece, with these, the uh, front doors would open up, and there's a glass plate here, and there was a Norden bomb site that allowed them to uh, accurately bomb. So I'm going to make mine the uh, Battle of Midway with the uh, torpedo on it. So these will be closed up. But uh, yeah, it looks pretty good. I'm impressed. The uh, one last thing. The, the two consoles are going to be a challenge to put in place. You can just barely see the one, and it's it's kind of deep down inside of there, and the uh, the alignment pins are not very good. So um, I haven't quite figured out how to get all this in place. This piece here goes on the inside, but butts up against the top of the fuselage like that. But uh, it it too is going to be quite a challenge to put in place and get it positioned properly. So uh, I'm not sure why Trumpeter did it this way, but um, these are gonna, this, the, the forward console is gonna be the only real big challenge uh, for uh, fitting that, that you're gonna have. So, and the directions are not real clear where the alignment uh, tabs are on the inside of the fuselage for this. So you're going to have to be careful how you do it. Now let's look at the tape up of this impressive model.
here you can see that the landing gear is pointed in a little bit and by pushing the wings up so that they connect properly with the fuselage like I showed you will fix the dihedral and the landing gear. Both these doors on the bottom of the fuselage will have to be tweaked so that they fit properly, whether you position them open or closed. The opening at the bottom of the fuselage where the fin of the torpedo goes has no detail, but the fin is so big you're not going to be able to see much inside of this area. The fit of the canopy to the fuselage is just outstanding on both the port and the starboard sides. This is one of the best canopy fits I've seen on any kit in 132nd scale. Now let's take a close look at all of the parts. The kit provides decals for both pre-war and early war colors, and the kit also has a set of masks for all of the canopy parts. The early World War II and pre-war color sheets are also very well done. Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed our latest tape up review of the brand new 132nd scale Trumpeter Devastator. We got this kit pronto from Free Time Hobby, so I want to do a shout out to Brandon. Thanks for much for getting it to us so quickly. And with that, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, give us a thumbs up, and if you get the chance, visit our website at www.mikeashley.com where you'll find dozens of tutorials and free PDF downloads, including all of my original scale modeling books. Have a great evening.